My name is Sheena Matthews. Earlier, I spoke to Lauren Chelson, who is the sponsor of Avonics Circular Plastics program. Circular economy is a topic that is gaining more and more importance. It's part of the European Green Deal. So I was excited to hear what Lauren has to say about what Evonik is doing in this important area. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you for the offer. <laughs> Can you tell us what Evonik is doing? Yeah, so Evonik has started recently over the last months its own circular plastics program. And basically what we've done is we've collected the various ideas and projects that have been ongoing in the company and put them together under a program and this allows us to take a look at the various different businesses that are involved in circularity and also the different sciences that are applied to get that cross exchange to make sure that we have the best and most efficient uh, solutions. It's a privilege for me to, to sponsor that project as it lies close to my heart. We're developing nicely with, with the topic here at Avonic. But why Avonic? Why is Avonic getting into this? Yeah, so for several reasons. So one of the main drivers is that we have a toolkit. We have several different options to help enable circularity. So whether it comes to existing recycling technologies that are available today, or whether it comes to some of these solutions that the mass producers of, of plastics are looking for to make sure their, uh, their processes come into a full circle, we have technologies to offer um, to enable uh, circularity. In addition to that, we have our own um, responsibility for the environment and the footprint that we have. And if we're able to take on more circular raw materials and use less virgin raw material, then we make a contribution. Or if we're able to enable our customers or even ourselves to do less incineration and keeping carbon in the cycle, then we make our contribution. And lastly, I would say, and probably the most important, but this is, this is our sweet spot. So this is this is the type of, of challenges that a specialty chemical uh, company is, is made for. So these very complex systems and looking for better solutions, uh, this, is, this is our business. When you say business, can you make that a bit more concrete? What is the business potential behind a circular plastics program? So in the program that we've defined today, we have a cluster of different projects within it and uh, we look at around the order of magnitude of, of 350 million in the pipeline right now by 2030. So it's not small, it's definitely a start um, and we hope over, over we, as we move forward and find these solutions that we can develop even more potential. Our customers, our partners are, are asking for it. What stage, though, is this at? Is it something that we're going to be seeing tomorrow? Um, our portfolio of projects span uh, the commercialization uh, with to R&D. So several of the projects are still firmly in the R&D area. We also have several um, parts of our portfolio that are already commercialized, where we have, for example, in mechanical recycling, where you think of bottle sorting, um, and grinding and cleaning and separating. We have technologies that are used for this and commercially available. And then we have uh, products that are still in, and even processes that are still in development in the R&D phase. And the two biggest criteria for developing those products through the portfolio is two things. One, we look at the economics. So if um, a, a new circular process is four times as expensive as a traditional uh, a process to make plastics, this is a challenge. So maybe we have to go back to the drawing board and come with a next iteration of a solution before, uh, before we have something that would be widely adapted. What's critical is, is that we're meeting the end goal. So for example, if a circular process is four times more energy consuming, right. is that really meeting the expectation that we have intended? And to, to measure that, we do life cycle analysis, which then you spend time and, and efforts to define where are your um, boundaries, how do you evaluate it, and are we really offering something that's more, more sustainable. You mentioned um, the washing and grinding. Maybe you could give me another example or another couple of examples of what Avonic can actually do. Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to what's traditionally known for the mechanical recycling, um, there's also a new form of recycling that's being developed as well in the circular uh, topic, and that has to do with chemical recycling. And this is basically where you use um, technology to be able to take the used uh, plastic material and be able to regenerate out of it uh, raw materials, so in various different forms. And the goal here, of course, 
as I already mentioned, the economics and also making sure that it's environmentally stable or, or sustainable. But the other part would be to make sure that we have solutions that can be um, reused in, in high-end applications. So there's definitely solutions where you can do this um, today, but the materials that are available aren't necessarily able to be in high-end applications, and then it limits the use of, of the recycled material. So this is real important for us. High-end applications, can you give us an example? When I talk about high-tech applications, I talk about applications, for example, in, in e-mobility, applications where we look for uh, light weighting of materials, where we look for the ability to isolate heat um, in, in automobiles um, so that we can convert them into um, electric mobility, or to look at medical devices, where we have really high purity, um, very durable devices that are used in, um, that are plastics, but are used in really specific applications. We also have, for example, high performance polymers. Um, where we uh, are, are able to um, make applications more durable, safer, um, longer lasting, um, and these areas, I would say, are more high-tech applications. I was going to ask you about that, because Ivonic, is Ivonic not actually a contributor to the problem, because Ivonic also makes plastics? And I would go back to the discussion as to what is um, really the life cycle on on, on, on projects and, and, and products that are, are being used in the market and to compare really what is more sustainable or not. And um, when we look at the ability of a lot of our, our products to be able to um, stay in service longer, to um, isolate or insulate um, housing longer, um, it's a pretty critical life cycle analysis to see whether it's part of the problem or solving the problem. Why is this important to you personally? Yeah, so um, when I was responsible a few years ago for one of our businesses, I saw an image at the time of a stack of mattresses in a landfill, and it was pretty impressive. And I thought, well, if, if everyone should have the right to a good quality of life, um, then we probably have more of these pictures going forward. So this is really a challenge, and how do we, how do we solve this? So from that point forward, um, not only did it leave an impression, but I made a commitment that at least um, the area of scope that I, I come in contact with, that we would look for solutions to this. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ivonic, leading beyond chemistry.